Well, hey guys, happy Vlogtober Day 26. Welcome back to the Q&A. Today's Q&A is for all of those rosacea sufferers out there who have been requesting a Q&A on cilantro or topical ivermectin for rosacea. If you're not familiar with rosacea, it is a fairly common skin condition that is characterized by a tendency towards redness on the face and the central face with flushing and it's really a challenging skin disease for sufferers to navigate because anything they put on their face, whether it be sunscreen or face wash, moisturizer, makeup, it often can sting and burn and precipitate a flare of redness. In addition to redness and kind of a flushed appearance, people with rosacea also suffer from red bumps, papules, pustules, most commonly overlying the central face around the nose as well. And sometimes the skin can become thick, swollen, and uh, over time develop a almost dilated pore type appearance that can really bother people. People may describe this as a textural, but really it's just the inflammation of the rosacea, kind of distorting the architecture of the skin anatomy a little bit with that swelling and, and redness. The pathophysiology of rosacea appears to be multifactorial. It uh, largely is <laughs> determined probably by our genetics, which we have to thank for many things, as well as environmental conditions. It can flare, we know, with ultraviolet light exposure, changes in the humidity, and things that we put on our face can also precipitate a flare of rosacea. Certain foods in our diet can, can precipitate a flare, and then uh, some people, many people with rosacea, it has been demonstrated have a high burden of something called demodex mites on their skin. Demodex mites sound really terrifying and they freak everyone out. They are a component of normal skin flora. Everyone has demodex mites. They don't cause rosacea per se, but it appears that people with rosacea, because they are so sensitive to things on the skin, they may have a sensitivity to demodex. And for whatever reason, they also have a high burden of demodex mites on their skin in comparison to people who do not have rosacea. And it's thought that this kind of excess burden of demodex, as well as the sensitivity to these little mites, can uh, contribute to the redness, the flushing, and the severity of an individual's rosacea. So this is where the topical drug cilantro or ivermectin comes into play. Ivermectin is an antiparasitic drug that has been around for probably about 20 years. And it has a very wide safety margin and is used to treat many, many, many uh, parasites, both in human medicine as well as veterinary medicine. Uh, not only systemic parasites, but different kinds of parasites and mites that may get on, on your skin and cause rashes. And so this cream became of interest for people with rosacea, given the, the fact that it had been demonstrated that people with rosacea have a higher burden of demodex on their skin. The way cilantro or ivermectin works is it has very, very, very high affinity and selectivity for a ion channel that is present in invertebrate uh, muscle cells and nerve cells. So it binds to that little channel and can affect the way signaling occurs across those cell membranes in the mite or the parasite, the invertebrate, and effectively paralyze it. So it's a kind of a, it's a paralytic agent essentially, and it's selective only for the mite. It has really no, no consequences to human health or to animal health. It doesn't cross our blood brain barrier, so it can't affect the nerves in our central nervous system at all. And it's very safe and even safer when applied topically in a cream form such as with cilantro. Repurposing an old drug for a new indication is nothing new in medicine and occurs frequently for a variety of conditions and other drugs as well. Topical cilantro or ivermectin was 
first examined in randomized controlled trials of people with papulopustular rosacea, people with the type of rosacea that's comprised of the red bumps, uh, applied topically to the entire face once a day for 12 weeks, was shown to not only be effective at reducing the burden of inflammatory lesions, but also is very, very well tolerated. And actually, in comparison to the vehicle arm or the, the cream without the active drug in it, they actually had fewer side effects of stinging and irritation. So it's safe, it's effective, and it's very well tolerated. Then later on, uh, cilantro was compared in 16-week trials to a standard of care treatment for rosacea, which is topical metronidazole 0.75%. And um, after 16 weeks in the, of, of treatment, the group getting the cilantro actually had uh, better overall improvement in their uh, burden of rosacea, papules, and pustules in comparison to those receiving metronidazole topically. So it appears that uh, cilantro or ivermectin is, is much more effective, or a little bit more effective at least, than, than topical metronidazole. And in other studies, looking at it in comparison to azelaic acid, it seems to be kind of comparable to azelaic acid or finacea for rosacea. I have a video on azelaic acid, so if that's something that you are interested in, make sure you check that video out. It, like all of my uh, Q&As, are found in a playlist called Skincare Q&As. You'll find the, there to be uh, Q&As on rosacea and uh, various topical drugs used to treat rosacea. So go check in there if you have any, any other questions. Uh, I may have already addressed them. But overall, topical cilantro is pretty effective for papulopustular rosacea and is very safe and is very well tolerated. It um, is pregnancy category C, so it is not indicated during pregnancy, unfortunately, whereas azelaic acid is okay in pregnancy. Uh, but otherwise, it's very safe and uh, when applied to the skin, is absorbed systemically at a very, very low um, amount. And even, even that which is absorbed, we know to be safe uh, because it is far less than what is given in oral doses. It's largely more effective for the papules or the bumps and, and little pustules, so those components of the rosacea that look like whiteheads. It's largely effective at reducing the burden of those. It can lessen some of the severity of persistent facial redness, but it will not, unfortunately, wipe away that facial redness completely. Um, but it will, it will help substantially for both the papulopustular re, uh, lesions, as well as, at least in my experience with this drug, um, some of that persistent redness, although again, it will not completely erase the redness. But when coupled with something like pulse dye laser, however, the um, outlook at improving persistent facial redness, you can imagine, improves even more so than either treatment by itself. So the combination of the two um, can really offer an individual great potential for substantial improvement. Cilantro will be effective in anywhere from 40 to 80% of people using it. And as far as how well it is tolerated, probably about one in 88 or so individuals will stop using it after a year due to side effects like stinging or burning or irritation. If you have rosacea, you know that can be the case with pretty much anything you put on your face. So it's not surprising that cilantro is not an exception, but in comparison to other topical treatments used for rosacea, it actually seems to be much better as far as those side effects of stinging and irritation. But invariably, somebody's going to have problems with it. It is not going to work for everybody with rosacea, and there's really no way, good way to know for sure if it will be effective for you. Now, the follow-up question that everybody will want to know is, well, do I have to use it forever? What happens when I stop using it? Well, following discontinuation, unfortunately, symptoms will return within about four months in roughly half of people. So. While it can offer sustained control after cessation, that is not always the case. In fact, about 50% of people 
the symptoms will return when they stop when they stop the drug. So it's something that has to be continued for many people for the long term. That being said, one thing to bear in mind is that it is not a cheap drug, unfortunately. It should be, uh, but it is not. So a one month supply of topical cilantro, roughly a month of treatment, that costs around $320 here in the United States in comparison to metronidazole, which is about mm, roughly $120. So quite a bit more expensive. Oral doxycycline, a pill that uh, you may have uh, taken for rosacea, is also quite a bit cheaper than topical cilantro. Now your health and the way you feel about yourself, the control of your rosacea should not be dictated by price. But I'm telling you this because given that there are other effective treatments for rosacea, don't be surprised, unfortunately, if your health insurance declines coverage of the cilantro. Sometimes they'll cover it with a prior authorization letter written by your dermatologist. Um, I find it to be very helpful for pa the papules and pustules of rosacea and to impart modest improvement in persistent facial redness related to ro rosacea. Um, and it also enhances the outcomes of other treatments, like I said, like pulse dye laser. But yeah, that's really all there is to it for cilantro. It's great that we found a new use for an old drug, ivermectin. I just wish there wasn't, uh, it wasn't quite so expensive. Uh, it does offer quite a bit of, um, of hope for people with rosacea and improving their, their burden of disease. And so I hope that this video was helpful in kind of going over how effective it is, um, that it's very well tolerated and uh, hopefully gave you some information how it compares to some of the other standard of care treatments which you may have already tried and been frustrated with. So again, I hope this video was helpful to you guys in kind of answering your questions. And if you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow.